from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus was speaking, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said, Happy the womb that bore you, and the breasts that you sucked. But he replied, Still happier those who hear the word of God and keep it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. Ave Maria. A week ago, I went to Cambridge to visit a friend of mine who recently has joined the Dominican Order. There is their novitiate. And over a meal, he was talking quite beautifully about the Order's love of Our Lady. And of course, Our Blessed Lady, who entrusted the Rosary to our Church through St. Dominic as a tool of converting the Albigensian heretics and other sinners. That's something we must never forget during our prayers and praying of the Rosary as a weapon and an aid to bringing sinners back to God. But that is another homily. He also told me that at the end of their Sunday Vespers, they sing their own litany to Our Lady, which has over a hundred titles to her. He also said that during that litany, they really look forward to the gin and tonic, which is coming after the prayers. One of the titles he mentioned was Mary, Our Resurrection. On first hearing this, we can be confused. Surely it's Jesus who is our resurrection. But without Mary, our resurrection is not possible. Our Lady is the gate, the portal, the sanctuary, which God the Father uses as the very means to save us, to restore us, to forgive us, and to return us back to him forever in heaven. The church reminds us as we are between these two feasts, the solemnity last week of the Assumption and the feast or the memorial of Our Lady Queen and Mother on Monday, that the Assumption of Our Lady is a pivotal point in our belief. And participation in understanding this miraculous thing can help us to understand our life, our faith, and our role within it. The Church reminds us that Our Lady is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and is an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians through Our Lady. We, who have been given the promises of Christ, will enjoy the same favour as God placed on Mary. This is mind-blowing. We will also be with them in heaven. But at the resurrection of the dead, our soul will be joined with our bodies, just like Christ and his mother. Icons of the Demission of Our Lady, the Assumption, her falling asleep into eternal life, sometimes show 
a white-haired Our Lady being swaddled in swaddling clothes and being taken up by her son into heaven. Mary, who once looked after her son, our Lord, is now being looked after by him. Sense of completion. This is more than care for an aged parent, but this is an insight for us into the life of the Blessed Trinity and what they want for us. So we need to start to prepare now for that life in heaven. We know that we have a place in heaven, but we cannot rest on our laurels. A spiritual life, my friend, takes work. And it's not just about our prayers or how many times we go to Mass on a day or how many rosaries or novenas we're currently saying, how many candles I have lit. To see faith just in that context is to really miss the point. Everything in our life is coloured and marked by our faith. And as we prepare to be with our Lord and Our Lady in heaven, we have to see every area of our life. There are niggles and there are problems. There are anxieties. Most um, Catholic families, there are issues with other members of the family. And it's not right that we bear grudges. We can't go to mass and bear a grudge. We have to begin with Our Lady's help to challenge ourselves and those around us. We cannot accept uh, things um, that are not right. We cannot be mean and we cannot gossip, but we have to try with Our Lady's help to cut to the quick and to sort these things out because everything, as I say, has uh, a role uh, in our own salvation. It's not just about our prayers. Meanness and gossip, deceit, are all these things that need to be worked upon so that we can be free, so that we can be uh, open to the life of grace, which God the Father is desperate to help us with. In this year of mercy, we have to be merciful like the Father, and Our Lady can help us, Mother of Mercy. Mother of Mercy, help us to be open to Christ. Mother of Mercy, help us to order our life in the sight of the cross. The shadow of the cross should be in everything we do. And the resurrection should be our delight. We should be excited about the resurrection of Christ, about the completion of son and mother together in heaven. And we should desire that above all things. So, dear friends, our work hasn't quite finished. In fact, our work is only just beginning. The church is there to help us. We're never left alone. We're never left there to, to, to flounder on our own. We have the support of our clergy. We have the support of the sacraments, of mass, of the other devotions, of adoration, confession, and so on and so forth. We don't only have those, we also have to engage in our faith. We have to begin to study, begin to read the Bible prayerfully. We have to also be um, people, of, uh, people of charity. Charity does not only begin at home. Charity must go out to other people. It's, it's how we see other people. 
how we treat other people, what we do for them. When we don't want to do it, that's when we must give to other people. When we are feeling closed, that is when we must give to others. Our Lady can show us the way because she wants to remind us that Christ has fought the battle, that Christ is there for us, and that Christ is the only way, the only answer. She never seeks the glory for herself. In fact, I think Our Lady is embarrassed by the kind of the love uh, uh, and the devotion that we, that we put on her because she exists only to be a tabernacle for the Most High. So let's pray that we may sort out our own temple within so that we one day can be with them in the most amazing tabernacle there is, heaven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.